Getting sick while you're in college is not optimal. Even a common cold can make classes and activities much more difficult. But with some simple precautions, having a plan for when you get sick, and knowing your options should you need medical assistance, you will be ready if issues arise. Being in close quarters is one of the characteristics of college that can lead to illness. So the residence halls, living with multiple roommates off campus, using group transportation, and large classes add to the mix of regional and common germs and viruses that you can catch. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek, and this is Dealing with Illness in College. have grown up in a world where avoiding illness was job one. COVID taught us all how to work to keep from getting sick. Hydrate, eat well, sleep, wash hands, cover your mouth when coughing or sneezing, clean common surfaces often with germ-killing products, and utilize as much ventilation as possible. Wearing masks and vaccinations are also options depending on your situation. For example, meningitis and HPV vaccinations are often recommended for college students. Have a conversation with your doctor to determine which vaccinations they would recommend, why they believe they are important, and the possible implications for your health. Your best bet is to consider your school and treatment options before you get sick. In fact, before you leave home. You need to make sure you have a strong understanding of any health insurance that covers your treatment. If through your family, ask your parents to help you figure out how to access care in your college town. Is there an in-network emergency or urgent care facility you need to use? Can you access doctors in the college town? Is there a pharmacy near campus that is best for your use? If you are covered by a job, have the same discussion with someone from the Human Resources Department. If you purchased health insurance from the college, read all that is available about how to handle illness under their plan. Under any of these programs, what facilities can you access without having to pay a penalty? And with any kind of insurance or medical care, you must make sure you know how to access that care and that you have the cards or documents you need. Also make sure you understand the process you must utilize. One last word on preparation before you leave for campus. It is recommended that each student sign a medical power of attorney that allows a family member or trusted ally to provide information to medical professionals should there be a situation in which you cannot speak for yourself. These can be gained through an attorney or online. It is strongly suggested that you have an honest conversation with the individual who holds that power about your medical history. If it could impact treatment, things like allergies or persistent disease, and any firm wishes you would like to have communicated to the medical personnel. It is also suggested that the student sign a HIPAA or health privacy waiver with that individual's name listed. This allows the person holding the medical power of attorney to access information on your health before they make any decisions. Be prepared for possible illness. Having a decongestion electrolyte-based product, tissues, band-aids, or other items on hand can make it much easier when illness or injuries arise. As we all know, being prepared generally means that the supplies will not be needed. Somehow the universe knows that if we are proactive about illness, we will not get ill. Strange, isn't it? Yet, illness does come. Should you get sick, there are steps that you need to take. This is mainly for those with a communicable disease. If you haven't yet done so, check each class syllabus to determine the instructor's instructions for those who are sick. If contact is requested, do so at your earliest convenience before class starts. The effort is worthwhile even if only leaving a message or an email. If the instructor does not take attendance, contact may not be necessary, but if you're going to miss class for an extended period of time, then you do need to make contact. Do not go to class if the illness is communicable. Work to keep up with assignments, get notes, and if possible, watch the class online. You should also sit out any organization meetings, gym visits, parties, bars, or taking your germs anywhere they can be easily shared. Keep your distance from roommates and classmates, especially if the illness can be airborne. Clean up after yourself. Keep your space clean and well ventilated and know that cleaning yourself up can make all the difference in your mental health. Sleep, hydrate, eat as healthy as possible, and make contact with people who have made you feel better when you have been sick in the past. 
a call home or a video chat with your grandma may be just what your mental health ordered. Try to keep track of your health. Do you see a pattern in your illness, migraines, or pain? If so, when you feel well enough to get out, ask a doctor how to manage that pattern. You need to be aware of a gradient scale of sickness. For example, there are the basic illnesses you have probably had before, colds, migraines, or cases of the flu, COVID, or food poisoning. Should the duration of your illness be longer than a week or your fever be higher than 102 degrees, or you have a stiff neck, bleeding that won't stop, or if there is a pain that you are feeling that is acute or cannot be mitigated by over-the-counter pain relievers, you need to contact a doctor or follow the instructions of a medical facility. One other level exists, that of your inability to care for yourself or call for your care. Make sure your roommates or friends know how to help you should you be unconscious, unable to eat or drink, in deep pain, or unable to move yourself. Have a discussion about your medical wishes and return the favor. If you reach a level of illness that leads you to need medical assistance, you or your representative must contact your instructors or academic advisor to manage your coursework. Other cautions. Use all medications as directed. Don't take anyone else's drugs. Have someone check on you periodically, especially if you live alone. And if you don't let yourself heal, you will likely end up being sicker or be sick longer. On-campus medical care can make all the difference in getting the support you need. Familiarize yourself with what student health has to offer and how you can access those services. Should you have an instructor who has little patience with sick students, do your best to meet their requests. If you can't, ask your medical provider, academic advisor, or a department representative to assist you with the instructor. Being sick stinks, but it is something that we all tend to go through at one time or another. Do everything you can to avoid illness, manage any illness you contract, and most importantly, make sure you know the resources available to you should you become sick. Use all you have learned about avoiding or preventing disease to stay healthy during college. Should illness find you anyway, utilize all you have learned about available resources and class management techniques. Please like, subscribe, and share if you found this video helpful.